welcome back to another week of my vlog. I don't know. This is my 20th video on this channel and that's really amazing because that just goes to show that it's been 20 weeks since the very first video, which was this one. I've done this consistently. That was my main goal when I started this channel was if I was going to do it, I was going to do it properly and I was going to upload a video every single week on a Sunday. And I've done that. Let's do a 20 second recap of the last 20 videos. Go. <laughs> videos obviously with this whole coronavirus thing every human being on the planet's plans have literally gone out the window much like mine I've had to adapt and readjust and kind of think on my feet which is kind of what this video is this week when I'm, I'm gonna write a list do you know what I'm gonna do, no, do, do? I want to do a mind map for those of you who do know me and work with me you're gonna know how much I love a mind map and honestly mind maps are like the perfect way to just get your thoughts out. Oh my God! Wow! So, turns out a mind map actually isn't probably the best representation and I probably should have just listed everything. So let's try that again. <clears throat> my God, why is it so hard? Five things isolation has taught me. So number one, let's try to do it like this. 4.40 a.m. wake up. So one thing that I've been doing that's really, really helped me, and it was very hard to do in the beginning, but now doing it consistently for the last four to five weeks, whether it's a Monday or a Sunday, I wake up at 4.40 a.m. 4.40. Oh, Every single morning. I'm gonna tell you why I do that. Reason number one is, 4.40 instead of 5 a.m. literally gives me the perfect 20 minute block to actually wake up and get up. I don't sleep in, I just can't. My body clock won't allow me to. There is literally something about 5 a.m. where you just feel this sense of like inner peace and quiet and stillness. Two, why a morning routine is so important. I mean, I've been doing it for four weeks and now it's getting very, very easy to wake up at 4.40 a.m. I'm even finding I'm going to bed a lot sooner. It's been really helpful to give myself that extra bit of time in the morning when no one's awake and I can really, really focus. Your mind is working the very, very, very best from like the moment you wake up to about, I think they say 11 a.m. or midday or something like that. It gives me enough time to wake up, my alarm goes off. The second I wake up, I give myself maybe five minutes to really snap out of it. Then I start doing my breath work or a meditation and that will go for about 10 minutes. From 5 a.m. I will make myself a shitty cup of Nescafe coffee and I freaking love and look forward to that cup of coffee every single morning. From there I set aside about 10 to 15 minutes to journal. Journaling's really really helped me not just now but over the last few months. I think consistency in any element of life, whether that is a small thing you do or if it's going to the gym every day. Consistency is key to everything. You wanna get better at something, stay consistent at it. So after I do my journaling, I pretty much will either study or I read 10 pages from a book that I'm trying to finish. Then from there, I'll either do a workout. By 6 a.m., I pretty much got my head screwed on. I know what I have to do for the rest of the day. I feel that sense of clarity and I just feel at ease. And I feel good for it and I think it's really really important to put yourself first and give yourself it doesn't have to be three hours it could just be half an hour of doing something for you that little block you give yourself in the morning can literally set you up for success for the rest of the day sit down and write a list of six things you want to accomplish in a day or not even a day in a morning basically write down wake up at 5 a.m. write in my journal listen to a podcast Listen to music, do my stretches in the morning. Make your bed is a really good one to do every single morning because it's visualizing the decluttering of space, which is kind of what we're trying to do with these morning routines every morning in our heads. 
three is movement. And why movement is so important is because I'm a very, very active person. I love boxing. I love all my strength and conditioning training and adding maybe a half hour workout into my morning routine. It literally gives me the sense of achievement, especially if you're cooped up inside. There's ways around it. Just move your body. It's so, so, so important for not only physical health, but your, your mental health as well. The other thing I've been doing is Wim Hof's breathing method. That is done every single morning for 10 minutes. And then there's also meditation. I've really started to enjoy meditating. That's been a really, really key unlock for me. That space that you can give yourself just by meditating a little bit every day, it really, really does help. Get yourself in check and just bring yourself back to the present moment. Like, you know, we, we live so far in the past or the future that we forget that what's happening right now is the present moment here. It's just being, being alive and breathing and just here. Four is gratitude and journaling. I can tell you honestly, a few years ago, I used to think journaling was a load of rubbish. I used to think there's no way in hell just writing down your thoughts is going to help me to clear my mind and focus and just get myself mentally healthier. Two years on, I've completely changed that thought process and now believe that journaling is a fantastic tool that is pretty much free. So the way I journal is I have no process. Whatever thoughts come to mind, I will write it down. If someone picked up my journal and tried to read it, they would have no idea what it says. Actually, I've got it here, I'll show you. It's literally just a bunch of like scribbles. And then sometimes I get really creative. We do some mind maps. Oops. Like I don't even know what it says. But anyway, the average human being, from the moment that they wake up to the moment that they go to sleep, will have anywhere between 70,000 to 80,000 thoughts a day. A day. That is a lot of things to be thinking about. What's even more interesting is that 90% of the thoughts that you have every single day stem from thoughts that you had the day prior. So if you're not actually trying to get these things out of your head and putting them onto paper or verbalizing them or whatever, they are constantly just ticking over and over and over in your head. The very, very, very first line that I will write is always, today I am grateful for. Now that gratitude line can be absolutely anything. Anything from like my breath, the fact that I can breathe, to the shitty cup of coffee that I get to enjoy every single morning. And it's so bad, but it just brings me so much joy. Something as small as that, can literally help you to change and shift the mindset and that very first thought that you have every single morning. Because when you think about it, if you go to sleep one night and you've got a really negative thought, and it's the last thought you think before you go to sleep, nine times out of 10, as soon as you wake up the next morning, it's the first thing you think of. Write that shit down. Write it down and get it out of your head. And always starting with something that you're grateful for sets you up to have positive thoughts from there on in. The way you start to shift that mindset from a negative one to a positive one is to start seeing the beauty in life or the silver linings in a bad situation. And if you don't start now, well, nothing changes if nothing changes. And number five is connection. And this is probably the most important thing that I have learned during this isolation period. You will have seen it if you've been watching these videos that I've been posting over the last couple of weeks. It's been amazing connecting with so many people. That feeling of being alone and no one understanding what you're going through has been something that I've tried to really, really understand and dig deep into. And I feel like I have achieved that with these conversations that I've been having with people. That sense of connection is so important during a time of isolation. And we have so much more in common with people than we actually think. And when people show signs of vulnerability and open themselves up, that's where those true, genuine connections start to form. And I experienced that. I experienced that with one of my friends from high school that I haven't seen or spoken to in 11 years. And from that conversation, we picked it up as if we'd never left it. It just goes to show that, you know, when you have proper connections with people, time doesn't even matter. And then there was talking to someone that I'd met a couple of years ago and we had one interaction together. And after that, we didn't really talk, but then I decided I would call him. And so we ended up talking for like an hour 
just about life. And this is someone who literally lives on the other side of the world. Then there was someone who I'd never met before. I did that with two people actually. One of the girls that I'd never met, we started talking through Instagram and she really, really opened up to me. That's the beauty of meeting strangers and having these connections with people is that there's no sense of judgment. You know, I guess vulnerability for me is is strength, it's not weakness. And I found that from doing my video about my story. This whole isolation period has been a really life-changing thing for me despite having my plans turned on their heads. It's actually worked out probably for the better, or at least I'm seeing it that way. This is my list of five things that isolation has taught me. Yeah, I think having a morning routine, it helps me set myself up for the day and gives me that kind of mental clarity. And the 4.40 a.m. wake up is to just figure out all the shit that I need to do during the day. But it's kind of nice just knowing that you've got that time to yourself. That is your time to invest into you. That's why it's so important because we often forget to invest time into ourselves. Because when you prioritize yourself as number one, you show up to your life at 100%. Rather than prioritizing yourself as number six or seven on your list of important things that you prioritize and value, Doing that, prioritizing yourself as the last thing on the list, means that you can only show up to your life at 80%, 60%, 40% at some days. Therefore, you are no good to anything else that is above you on that list because you're not functioning at 100%. So give yourself that little block of time in the morning before your day starts or your world starts turning to just focus it and just be with yourself. Number three was movement and movement is so important because it gives you that clarity again and just makes you feel good and we all want to feel good, right? Four is gratitude and journaling and practicing both of them together is so important to help you see the silver linings in a bad situation because there always is something that will come out of a bad situation that doesn't always need to be negative. And lastly, number five is connection. And connection is so important in general, but also during a period of isolation where we do tend to feel alone. And maybe instead of having bullshit, rubbish conversations, try and ask the deep and meaningful questions. Ask questions that you wouldn't normally ask each other and see where it takes you. When we don't ask the right question, we don't get the right answers. Yeah. They're my five things. If you have five things you've learned or one thing you've learned, let me know because I don't know where I'm going with this, but yeah. Everything I thought I was meant to be doing right now, knowing that I'm not gonna be able to do any of it, has kind of put me at ease and made me really see the importance of not only just being present and trusting yourself and trusting the process and the journey, but it's really made me see that sometimes the destination isn't important or the end goal it's not important what's really important is the journey and the process and taking all that in the future is so uncertain right now and the past doesn't even matter anymore we have no other choice than to be fully present in our own lives that's what this week's video is pretty much about it's just the things that i've learned maybe just maybe you've watched this and you've taken a little bit of something out of it. I don't know if you will, but if you do, let me know what you did take from it because again, I love connecting with people and thank you for being here. Thank you for taking time out of your day or night or afternoon to sit here and watch me talk about this stuff. No, but seriously, I do appreciate every single person who watches these videos. I get stuck on these outros. I don't really know what to say or do, so I just awkwardly sit here. So, yeah.